we've had long-standing issues around concerns around safety in particular uh, with staff. Um, the, the trigger, I suppose, if nothing else in this circumstance, was that the department were looking at reducing our response team from a six-man team down to a four-man team. Um, our centre, uh, on any given day, we could have anywhere between uh, average 80 up to 200 kids, uh, but at the moment we're regularly sitting around 120? Yeah, 120. 100, 120. So um, the department decided that uh, we, didn't, um, we didn't need three two-man teams, uh, that we had a lower population um, within the sensor and therefore um, we're going to cut back our third team, our ability to respond. That posed really big issues and concerns for us. In um, Our sensor is quite a, a vast area. Kids are spread out in all different locations during school, um, their residential units, um, psychs, programs. And so by taking one of our two-man teams, it actually um, minimised our ability to be able to respond to incidents. Um, the reality is, is we have several incidents a day, um, exponentially higher than any uh, we're a detention centre, but any prisons within the state. So that sort of produced massive concerns for our staff and the ability to be able to assist with staff results, prevent injury from fights, um, numerous other scenarios that happen within our centre. Um, so yeah, all the staff got pretty upset pretty quickly. No, the, the staff assaults have been, a, been an issue for quite some time. Um, and the third recovery team was part of uh, an agreement after um, a couple of the riots we've had at Banksia Hill. Um, and they've proved effective, um, but it was something that all the staff felt really strongly about um, because that's, that's your backup, that's, that's who you go to if you, if you run into problems. So we were lucky it was a subject that everyone was passionate about. There was almost a term or a time there where, um, where it was sold, it was almost expected to come to work and get assaulted, it's almost accepted. And that was language we did not agree with at all. Like we, we accept to come to work and deal with uh, young people with violent tendencies, uh, it's our job to manage that, but it's not, our, it's not acceptable behaviour for us to actually have to put up with that. Coming on as a delegate, um, I haven't changed. No, I've still remained vocal. And I'm happy to have those hard conversations and those hard meetings with senior management team. Um, so I think some of it is that they see Chris and myself having those hard conversations with management. We're putting ourselves out there in front of everybody else. So they, they can see that they're not necessarily going to be the pointy end of the arrow. And we, you know, we had to try and encourage the culture that the union is the members. It's not the delegates, it's, it's the members themselves. They're the ones who hold the power. Um, but sometimes they just, they just need a spearhead to, to show them that it can be done and to sometimes take the initial brunt of what they think is going to be the repercussions. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can think um, of a particular individual when we started having our early morning meetings. Um, he's actually not a member. Um, and I remember uh, one of the meetings I ran in the morning. Um, it, uh, we, we were very intentional, I think, with how we set them and when we set them, the time we set them. We actually tried a few sort of late night meetings after our shifts, um, and we found them to have limited impact at the time, is that probably a fair statement? Yeah. People get at the end of the day after a 12 hour day on our job and they just want to go home. Um, but we found these morning ones had more impact. People literally um, couldn't walk through the front doors without walking past us. And so I remember as I started gathering people one morning, considering a lot of our meetings were almost impromptu, they were intentionally that way inclined so as to not necessarily inform management um, of our desire to have a meeting. Um, and I remember a particular member, uh, or sorry, an individual who wasn't a member arriving and he sort of just asked the question, what's going on? And um, we had a couple of our other delegates who were there off shift in the, in the red shirts and so there was obvious reason for being there. And um, I was about able to explain, you know, this is what we're doing, we're having a catch up. Uh, it is as a union, but the reality is anyone's welcome to join. Um, because it's pre-work hours, like Mark said, we're educating them. We often have a tendency to come into work some 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour before their starting time because it benefits the individual in whatever job they're in to be able to just get their head around what they've got to do and all that sort of stuff. So, but to educate people that the reality is, is our start time is at 
we actually don't need to walk through the gate until 7.15 and, and the fact that we, we stand out the front and have a, have a meeting or a catch up, um, whether you're a delegate, a member or otherwise, there's nothing the department can do to you. They can't instruct you to walk through the doors early. So having this, this non-member sort of, that sort of sink in, he, he was, him and a number of other non-members actually attended the meeting I was at and um, were able to, to hear what we were saying, <clears throat> very much be part of it uh, because uh, it allowed them as non-members even to be there and be around it. Because we found, or I found, that with some of the work we'd done, um, there was, there was non-members who were just as passionate about what we were doing and agreed how highly what we were doing, <clears throat> but for one reason or another hadn't signed up to be a member. So it was good to see them getting involved. I think it's probably worth noting too, at our delegates meeting we had um, on site here six months ago, we, we made a decision to diversify our roles, to be very intentional in what we did, um, for a number of reasons, for our own mental health and the stress of what we do every day in a job. But um, I think um, finding, for me personally, finding um, function within even as a delegate team was important because we accept that not every delegate can do everything. Uh, we all have different skill sets, you have different roles and responsibilities. So I think um, allowing each delegate um, the ability to be able to focus on their strengths and work on them was probably quite important. Um, I think there's definitely an element of, of empowerment. Um, I'll be honest, I think there's, I don't know about for yourself, but there's times of nervousness for you as your own delegate. You know, you are putting yourself out there and you need to, I think you need to educate yourself on your own JDF, your own, uh, awards and agreements to ensure that in our context we weren't looking to go outside the rules we were looking to use the rules um, as a means to, 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 to bring the department back to the negotiation table um, but I remember in particular you know one of the one of our big bosses walking past as I was out the front with I don't know probably 40 or 50 staff and he actually stopped before we'd started the meeting and, and sort of addressed me and said is everything okay and I said yeah we're just having a meeting we're just having a chat um, and uh, you can tell he was, he was a bit nervous. He, he was a bit concerned, considering seeing 30 or 40 staff out the front, just what's going on, what's it about? And he didn't ask the questions, he went in, we came in soon afterwards, and, but you know, within 20 minutes after the meeting, he was in my office asking what's going on, and what, what do we need to do, and how do we change this? And so you know, we were, I think we were just trying to put them on notice and trying to just get them back to the table. You know, like I said, it was a big enough issue, staff were passionate about it, they were concerned. Um, yeah, I think, like you say, there's a, for me, there's a, a mix between nervousness, as, 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 as Mark said, the spearhead, but also um, the solidarity is empowering.